Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery, some Halloween updates for Quen Image Edit. What have I got for you this time? Well, this little note gives you a quick overview. These changes include a power LoRa loader, the next scene LoRa we can take a look at. There's also an alternative upscaling VAE, some prompt-based masking and an alternative background removal node, as well as some new image encoding options. This is all stuff you can do at home on your own computer using Comfy UI. And those familiar with the channel will know that I like to use the rodent method to keep my workflows nice and easy to follow, as well as to do updates like we're doing here. If you're looking to do this for yourself, then you can start your learning and creation journey with my previous Quen image edit video, as I'll just be going through the updates in this one. Yes, I won't bore you by going through the whole thing again. Don't forget that along the way you can pause, take screenshots and all that sort of fun stuff if you are making this yourself. Also, if you find these videos helpful or perhaps you'd just like all the work done for you already, then you can support the channel via the Patreon link in the video description. Your support helps me make even more workflows for you and to share these videos with everyone. The freedom to choose is, of course, yours, and a huge thank you to all supporters because you make this possible. Okay, let's get into all the new goodies then. Loading has changed a little bit because now we're getting more LoRa's. It's nice to be able to mix and match, hence the lovely power LoRa loader. I've also switched to the native Torch compile node because why not? Don't forget you can bypass that with Control B. So we click on it, press Control B, and then it goes purple just like that CFG norm node there. Or you can simply remove it with the delete key. The VAE I've moved down here. Why? Because now there's this new option for an upscaling one. Yes, it says WAN 2.1 on it, but we don't care about names for things if they work now, do we? Hopefully I've taught you that by now. What does it do? Well, it makes things bigger. Just like the name says, two times upscale. How handy is that? We'll see that in action in just a moment, so don't worry. For the various options, I've split things out a bit because, well, some things prefer to be bypassed rather than muted. Plus, there are now so many options, I figured I'd give them their own little controls. There's a very important note there worth reading and paying attention to because even though it's Halloween, the workflow is still only a workflow and it can't do any magic. This means that you can select options which don't work, such as trying to use an image when you haven't opted to load one. Thankfully, it's all pretty straightforward, obvious stuff like that, but I will show you all these various options in action as we go along. For masking, there's this fantastic custom node pack, Comfy UI RMBG. It's got boatloads of things in it, but here I'm just using some prompt based masking. Saves all that faffing around in the mask editor, as instead you can just prompt for what you want to mask, like the prompt I've got here, person. I've also popped in a grow mask with blur as it's handy to use that to fill in the holes or use the various other functions it has too. That same pack I've also used in the remove background option, which is great if you just want to change the background on an image. Click on model over here and you'll see, oh yes, you've got lots of different models, RMBG2, all these different things. So it gives you a lot more control than the previous node which we had there, which was the robust video matting one. The next big change is the way you can pass different images to the model. So here we've got options for one, two images, and even three images as well. Let's just pop back to the one image version for simplicity. So here we can see basically we're taking the image, we're VAE encoding it, and we're adding it to the conditioning. Now that's handy because it means you can send in images using resolutions other than 1024 by 1024, which is what happens when you send them in via the prompting node. Talking of which, let's see the changes there. Here, I've moved the VAE and image options out of the way, put them in their own group over there, so that way you can turn them off if you like and only use the conditioning, or you can carry on and just use both of the options together. It is a pretty simple change, but it does give you a whole bunch more stuff you can do. 
OK, so with all the changes out of the way, it's time to take a look at the various things in action. First up then is text to image. So this is where you don't load any images here. I've got all the image options off. And because I've got all the image options off, I'll want to use an empty latent. You can still use either VAE. So we've got both of those on and we'll see what the upscale looks like in just a second. For this text to image prompt, I've got a rodent explorer holding up a lantern to examine an ancient sign on a mysterious wall. Because we're not using any images, it's the empty latent choice. And here we've got the width and height set to 1440 by 768. The K sampler I have changed a little bit, mostly because we've now got the two VAE output options. Of course, you can use a variety of steps, samplers and schedulers, but for the most part here I'm using six steps. Starting with the standard VAE output then, so the normal one from Quen, which isn't upscaled, and there, that's pretty good, I think that's nice. Honor the ancient seeds, very good image. In the alternative upscale VAE output, well, it looks almost identical, doesn't it? Apart from if we take a little look closer here, we can see that's 2880 by 1536. Ooh, very good. In the compare image option node, I've got image out and image out two selected. And if we go over, we can see, oh, they are pretty much identical. We'll have a little zoom in here. Now, there are some changes. It is actually higher detail. You can see on his badge there. So the normal one is a bit blurry. And then as you go up, you've got a lot more detail. Very nice upscale, I think, this one. OK, so that's one example of text to image. Now let's take a look at another one. So once again, still using the empty latent and not actually loading any images. I have the empty latent at 1024 by 1024. And the standard prompt I'm going to be using for the next set of images so we can see what they all do is a very British rodent mage explorer standing near a lotus lantern in autumn. For these comparisons, I'm also using the same K sampler setting, so in this case, LCM beta. The standard VAE output gives us, yes, a rodent mage there with his very British hat on standing next to a lotus lantern. We also have the upscaled version there as well. That's 2048 by 2048. And once again, if we have a look at the comparison, we can see, oh, there's actually quite a lot of detail. Let's zoom in on that. So that's the sort of slightly blurry original fur. And we go across and yes, there's a lot more detail there on the ears and all of the material as well. So I think the upscale has done a very good job there. OK, so let's see what happens if we do use an image. So here I'm using the latent choice image one. I'm not encoding the images via the prompt node like you would see usually with Quen. Of course, I'm loading image one and I have that latent encode option instead. So it's going in via the conditioning. The image I'm loading is this one here. So I've got my rodent mage dude there holding his little staff. And of course, this time the result is very much like the input image. The background is different, of course, but yes, it's definitely still the same rodent dude. He's got his little hat, little staff, and there's the Lotus Lantern there too. The upscaled version at 2048 by 2048, I think you can see there already, there's very much more detail in the fur, but it is still, of course, the same image, just nicely upscaled. Taking a look at the comparison then, so there's the original image. And if we have a look at the upscaled version, yes, this definitely loads more detail in there. I, I think I prefer the upscale. Now, what happens if we just change one option? So instead of image one, I'm using the empty latent. The empty latent is set to 1024 by 1024. And the result is, well, pretty much the same. So at 1024 by 1024, whether or not you're using the empty latent or the image latent, you're going to get the same result. So that's pretty good. OK, so let's use those same settings then. So we're using the empty latent. We're not sending it in via the prompt and we're still using image one and the latent encode option. But this time the empty latent is 1536 by 1536. 
now we definitely have a different image. It's still obviously the same rodent. It's kind of fixed his glasses, which is nice. The upscaled version is of course very much bigger. That's 3072 by 3072. And if we compare the results once again, so we've got the normal sized image. And as we go across there, that's the upscale. Very good indeed. Okay, so how do things change if we do instead enable images via the prompt? So we're still using the empty latent, but this time I've turned that on as well as also using the image latent encode option too. The empty latent in this case is still 1536 by 1536. And now the result is definitely very different. So it's much more like the original image and the whole of the background has changed and so has the lantern. So you see how you've got these different options for sending the image in via that prompt node or via the conditioning and you can get different results. If we zoom right in on that upscale comparison and go across this time, hopefully you can see his little outfit becomes a bit more detailed and the metal sort of changes a bit there on the lamp as well. Changing the options once again, so still got the empty latent and this time only passing it in via the prompt, so we haven't got that latent encode option on at all. The empty latent size is still 1536 by 1536. And the result still gives us our rodent, but in a very different scene. It's a bit more like the original, this one. So it's got some leaves in there, the autumnal thing, but more of the original background. Changing the options once more. So rather than an empty latent, we're using the image latent and we're sending them in via the prompt as well as doing the conditioning encoding. In this case, our rodent still looks very much like the original. The lantern is very different and the background is different as well. We've still got some of those rocks from the original image as well though. Or alternatively, you can just use the image latent and the images via prompt without the conditioning encoding. And once again, you get a different version of the image. So still got the same rodent dude. The lantern is on the other side and he's in a forest this time. If we compare the upscale versus the normal VAE as well, go across and I think you'll agree this time there's even more change on the fur and the details on the materials. As you've seen, depending on how you present your images to the model, you can send it in using the empty latent, send in the image or not, sending it in via the prompt or via the conditioning or mixing and matching the whole lot together. You can get all sorts of different results. Okay, so that's all sorts of different ways you can send the image in. Now we've got some different ways of prompting and let's have a look at this next scene, Laura, as well. Okay, so to start off with, I'm going to have it off. I'm using these options. So I've got empty latent, images going in via the prompt and also via the conditioning as well with the image that I'm sending in being this facial picture of a person. Because I can, this time I've set the empty latent choice to 768 by 768. And to try to change the scene, I've got the prompt, she is standing up. The result in this case is mm, close. So it's sort of added some bits and pieces to the original image. It's given her a body, but she's not really standing up, is she? Let's have a look at the upscaled version. So 1536 by 1536. It's a lot more detail on there. If we go and have a look at the comparison. So in some cases, who knows if you want that extra detail or not. It's certainly looking better on the flowers. However, if we turn that Laura on, so we've got the next scene Laura there, version two at 0.75 strength, using the same settings, of course, and the same image. But for the prompt, we've updated things a little bit. We've now got next scene, which is something you should do if you're using the next scene Laura. So the prompt now is next scene, she is standing up. And the result in this case, I think is very much better. I mean, to start with, she's definitely now standing up. If we compare the two versions as well, so we've got the original versus the upscale version. Yes, I think you can see the detail on the face there, things are becoming less blurry and on the vase and on the fireplace there and certainly the details on the material as well. Let's zoom in there just so you can see that. So there's the original and as we go across we've got the upscaled version. All very cool so far. Let's carry on using that next scene, Laura, but we're going to use even more images. So this time I've got image one and image two. 
I'm only sending image one in via the conditioning, but I'm sending both images in via the prompt. This is what I've got for image one. So my person there with a plain background. And for image two, I've got this rodent, which I'm also padding for reasons. As I'm using the empty latent, I can use whatever size I like. So 1440 by 1024 in this case. And for the prompt, next scene, the woman watches as the tiny rodent guards a small portal in a haunted forest grove at midnight. The result is, yes, I've got my character, it's extended her body, and I've got my rodent, and they're in a forest at midnight, and there's a little portal. Very nice. Let's have a compare on those images. So the original size and the upscaled one as that goes across. Not as much detail there as you can see because of course we've got a cartoon style image but that's that's okay, that's what I want. I don't want the image to go all weird and add lots of extra detail where I don't need it. So I like that upscale. How about we change the options again? So still using the empty latent, sending all the images in via the prompt but this time sending two images in. So same as last time but both images are going in via the conditioning this time. As you can see, sending both images in via the conditioning has changed things quite a lot. This time my character's there, more of a full figure, and she's pointing to the portal. So is my little rodent as well, it seems. If I do a big zoom in on the comparison node, then this time as we go across, hopefully you can see there are some slight changes there on the rodent's outfit. So much of the image remains the same, but there's certainly more detail on the rodent. Does it matter if your characters have backgrounds or not? Well, let's take a look. So here, we're using the empty latent, sending the images in via the prompt and both of them in via the conditioning as well. Here is my image one. So I've got the woman there in a blue hat, sort of outside London, which obviously has two big bends. And down here, we've got the angel rodent still as well. Also worth noting, this time I've changed the width and height. So rather than 1024, I'm using 1280 by 720. So that's almost the native resolution for that. And my rodent is also 480 by 832. For the prompt, I've got next scene. The woman's eyes change focus to look right and downwards towards the tiny angel rodent emerging from a small mystical portal near her in a haunted forest grove at midnight. So as you can see in the original image, her eyes are looking over to the left and in the newly generated image, okay, she's not looking down, but she is certainly looking over to the right. And we've got the little rodent there emerging from the portal. Zooming in on the comparison node to try and get some detail as we go across there. Again, little bit of change on the skin, but most of the change there, we've got some cleanup on the rodent. And of course, you can go all the way up to three images. So once again, still got the empty latent because I like that one a lot. Going in via the prompt and three images encoded. For the three images, I've sort of got this cartoon style rodent on a plain background. Image number two is some don't eat me soup. And down here, image number three is a human. And just for giggles, even though I am still using the next scene, Laura, I haven't included next scene in the prompt this time, which is the rodent and his female pal have a delicious ghost banquet laid out upon the table with spaghetti soup, which reads, don't eat me. And in the background is a haunted spirit outline, happy and hungry. The standard VAE output in this case, I think, is pretty cool. We've got the rodent, we've got some spirits, got the pal there, wooden spoon, and some don't eat me soup. Having a look at the upscale then, if we go across, there's the normal image and the upscaled version. You may not be able to see much of a change there. If we zoom in on the rodent's fur, you can probably see it a bit better there on his ear and the eyes as well. So do become a lot more clear. That's what I like in an upscale though. I don't want the whole image to change. I just want things to look better. So there you have it. Loads more options for images, a lovely upscale. And if you like getting all nerdy with workflow details and stuff, then don't forget to like and subscribe for even more. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.